What's up everybody, welcome back or to the channel. So first off, I just want to apologize for the lack of content lately. It's just been pouring down rain here in Pennsylvania for at least the last three weeks. It's been looking like this for about three weeks straight. So again, every day it's been nothing but thunderstorms and it only took a break this morning and the rain is coming back here in a couple hours. So I figured I'd at least come out and film a quick video. So today what we're gonna do is a full walk around tour of my truck on what I've done to it so far and what are some of my future plans for it. So without further ado, let's jump in and check this thing out. Okay, so again, I apologize for it being dirty. It's just been raining so much, it hasn't even been worth trying to wash it. So let's just start from the ground up. Now this is a 2016 Ram 2500 Cummins diesel. Now, starting with the suspension, I do have a McGoy's eight inch suspension lift. This was their kit that actually comes with the larger control arms. It comes with all the extended coils. It came with all the extended drop brackets for like your, your sway bars and your track bar and all the things needed to correct the geometry when you are lifting a vehicle that high. And when I'm referring to the drop brackets, I'm referring to stuff like this which helps get your sway bar down to where it needs to be because if I didn't have that bracket, my sway bar would be off on an angle and it would really mess up the geometry of what the sway bar is meant to be and would really mess up the ride quality. As well as this right here, which is an extended drop bracket, which helps lower my track bar so that it corrects the geometry as well. Because again, anytime you're starting to lift your truck up, I would say probably anything higher than four or six inches, you really have to start paying attention to your geometry because if you start messing that up, your ride quality is gonna suffer. And on the lift kit, I do have the Fox Shocks 2.0s all the way around. And I did have all the uh, lift kit components powder coated gloss black. So I had that done as well. Then I stacked a three inch performance accessories body lift on top of that suspension lift now i'm not a big fan of maxing out suspension lifts because you know when you buy a suspension lift kit and they say it's good from six to eight inches or eight to ten inches or whatnot a lot of times what you're doing you're extending that lift kit beyond what it's capable of doing and you're usually messing up the geometry which can mess up a lot of things in your truck it can make the ride be horrible it can make you wear out tires faster and so forth so i'm not a big fan of stretching out lift kits that's why i stack the body lift on top of the lift kit to get the height needed that i wanted now i do like the body lift i feel on the ram trucks now i can't speak on chevys and fords and so forth but on the ram truck it really hides itself very well you you really can't even tell it has a body lift except when you're looking at the gaps from the bed you know to the frame but if you put some good gap guards on, which we'll go over that here in a minute, um, you can't even tell. So that was a very inexpensive thing that I was able to do. And stacking a three inch body lift on the eight inch suspension lift gave me a total of 11 inches of lift, which I was now able to squeeze in 40 inch tires. So moving on to that, I am running the TIS rims. These are 24 by 14 with a negative 76 offset. And I'm running the Toyo Open Country MT tires. These are a 40 by 15 and a half. Okay. Then moving on, we'll go up front here. Okay, so up front, I went with the BDS dual steering shock stabilizer bar with the Fox Shocks 2.0s on both sides. I then went through with a wire brush and cleaned up some of the surface rust under here and used a high heat gloss black automotive spray paint and I spray painted my axles, my track bar, my steering stabilizers, my steering linkage and everything that I had access to that I could with a black spray paint. But as you can see, it really just helped clean up the underneath of the truck and make it look a lot nicer. And under here, I'll also show you that right there, that right here, I have the steering stabilizer bar as well, which also helps tighten up your steering. 
So if you don't have one of those, they're very inexpensive. But when you have a lifted truck and you're working on trying to correct your geometry and your ride quality, I always recommend a steering stabilizer bar because they do help tighten things up a little bit more. Now, because of the lift kit and this being a tradesman model, this truck does not have the electronic four wheel drive. It has the floor shift. Now, the problem that I had with that was when you start raising a truck this high off the ground, you actually screw up the geometry for the linkage for that. And I actually had to have a custom built four by four cable linkage that wraps around on this right here. So there's the linkage up at the cab. It wraps around and goes down to your four by four shift. So I had to have that done to correct my four by four linkage so that now my four by four works because before when i lifted it up this high it was really really hard to engage it in and out of four wheel drive but that fixed the problem so i had that done as well opening the doors these are the rbp stealth extended running boards the extended running boards usually come down about three inches lower than the standard which is really nice when you have a truck this high off the ground these are really, really nice running boards. I know that they're uh, very hard to find right now. And most people are usually comparing those to the amp steps, which in my opinion, I like the RBP steps better. I truly believe it's the same quality and the same specifications, but a fraction of the price. But that's that. Okay, so moving on, let's see here. If you see back here, they're all dirty here. Uh, so I, again, I apologize for that. But I wanted to show you, I actually made my own custom gap guards here, which I think turned out really, really good. And if you wanna see the video on that, just go check through some of my videos. I actually posted a video uh, how I did that, but it turned out fantastic. So I actually made my own heavy duty custom gap guards. So if you're running a body lift and you have that gap showing and you wanna know how to do that, go check that video out because it turned out really, really good. You know, I also have a decal in the back window here. As far as lights go, since we're steering here, I have this LED smoked out cab light there. I have the spider tail lights here. And I have the spider halo ring lights here as well on front and back. So there's that. I did change out my emblems. I got these, I believe on Amazon. Uh, these are the blacked out Cummins emblems. Uh, I got those swapped out. Let's see here, walking around here. I do have all the bumpers back and front painted to match. So I had that done. I got my bumpers, everything's painted to match. So I had that. I did end up going with the Bushwhacker Max coverage fender flares. I got those, I believe off custom offsets. I had those painted to match. I wanted these because I actually like the look. I like that aggressive look that they give, but because of the much larger tires and they stick out so far past the fender flares, I put these on so that visually they don't look like they're sticking out as far and in hopes that it does keep some of the cops from pulling me over as much, which so far it's been doing a pretty good job. So if you are looking for something that's aggressive that will help um, hide how wide your tires are, definitely check out the Max Coverage Fender Flares. They do a very good job with that. I also have the fiberglass Ram Air hood. I got this, this was off eBay years ago. Uh, I don't even know if you could find it still, but this was on eBay years ago. That was painted to match. So that is the uh, aftermarket Ram Air hood I had put on. I got the smoked out cab lights up there. I had those smoked out. I did them myself. If you wanna watch the video, just look for that. Uh, I do have smoked out marker lights right here, which I smoked those out myself, but I also did switchbacks there. So if you wanna see the switchback video, just go look for my video. I have that posted. But basically it's a wiring kit that you have wired in. When you're running your headlights, these will stay lit as well. So normally these only turn on when you're hit your turn signals but the switchback light kit that i put on actually leaves them on full time uh so, let's see what else we got going on here i think we covered all that so back here i did go with 
a new custom badge. So I ripped the factory one off and I put this one on, which is really awesome. I really like it. Turned out great. I have a video poster for that if you want to see that. Uh, I have the Gen Y 15-inch um, drop hitch kit. So I have that. And that kit now comes with the stabilizer bars. So I have that put on. So again, if you want to watch the install video on how to do that, I have that posted on my channel as well. And a couple accessories here. This is just basically a tow hook. So if you want to pull something or hook something, plus it just looks kind of cool. So I have that. I have the Tiger uh, tri-fold tonneau cover here, which I think is a really great tonneau cover. Um, I mean, it has its pros and cons. I mean, the one thing about these tri-folds is a lot of times when you fold them all the way up, they stop about right here. So when you do that, you really can't use your full bed unless you take the whole thing off. That's really the only drawback of a tri-fold cover like this. But it's one of the lowest cost tonneau covers you can find. I think I got this for about $199. And it's a fantastic tonneau cover. So, and I think I also have that video uh, posted on my channel as well. So keep in mind, a lot of what we're going through today on this truck, I did myself. Most of it I did myself. If you happen to sort through my YouTube channel, you'll see a lot of these videos and how to do this stuff yourself if interested. So let's keep moving on. So that's the back there. Um, let's see here, looking through the back underneath. As you can see here, I have the Banks rear differential cover. I put that on myself. So if you want to check that video out, go ahead. But I think it looks awesome and it does have some pretty cool technology. Keeps that fluid flowing better and cooler for maximum performance. But again, I mainly did it for the looks because I think it looks awesome. So looking under here, as you can also see, I have the Horn Blasters train horn kit. This is the Nightmare series. And uh, this is also their spare tire delete bracket kit that I have under there. So all I got to say here is that is very loud. It's extremely loud. So if you're looking for uh, a train horn kit or you want to learn more about how to wire it up and install it, go check out my channel. I have it posted, but I have that under there as well. Let's go over here. I have an exhaust tip here. This is a very large exhaust tip. I actually won that full disclosure. I won that on a giveaway online. This is from a uh, company called locally hated so it's a pretty cool exhaust tip they sell stuff like this but i got that one it's just really dirty i'm probably going to have that re-powder coated and then i actually might either powder coat or paint my exhaust here too in the near future so that's something i might do in the near future but that's what that is uh let's see here i do have all the bolt locks on there as well so now what's awesome about the bolt locks is you're actually using your truck key your standard truck key and it codes it to these locks so that you only have one key you don't have to have multiple keys when you're dealing with that i actually have them all paired into my truck key so there you go there uh let's see here looking up the side over here probably missing something uh, oh yeah and the wheels i have all the spikes i have the blacked out spiked lug nuts there i got those from custom offsets as well i did get the rims and tires from custom offsets as well so we got that I got the Goodyear flexible window rain guards here. Very, very good. I love these things. They're very flexible. I've had those on for probably a year and a half, two years now, and they're not dry. They're not brittle. Those things are flexible. Really, really nice. I love those. And I think I got those on Amazon. I do got the bullet antenna. So I got that as well. That works out pretty well. So that's pretty cool. Gives it a nice look. So I think as far as the outside is concerned i think we covered most of that well while we're back here let's check out the inside of the bed it's a little bit dirty again we've been doing some traveling here uh with the family here doing some different things so it's a little bit dirty but in here i do have a custom spray and bed liner that i did myself again the video is posted this is a i believe a bully liner so it's that rubberized bully liner so i had that done right here and right here is the new WeatherTech um, bed cover. So you can actually do that. So I actually have, if you look under here, I actually did the spray and bed liner for the whole bed, but then I added the WeatherTech custom bed liner in here as well for added protection. That's really awesome. So again, I have that video posted as well. I do have lights in here. I have these big uh, 60 inch LED light strips, which uh, are awesome. They do work, oh, which is over here. Uh, sorry, can't reach it. I just have a Velcroed over to the side. So I got this remote here. So if we just turn it on, there we go. 
So we have that and I could do, you know, all the different colors. I could do red, I could do, you know, green and blue and white and whatever, you know, whatever I want. This is pretty awesome. I really like these LEDs. Um, got these on Amazon. I posted that video as well, but again, this is awesome. I did find that when you turn them on and off from the power switch, if, which is right here, I just have hanging right here. If you use the power switch, they tend to reset and forget which light you had on there from the beginning. But if you leave the power switch on and just use the remote and turn them off with the remote, then anytime you turn them back on, they'll always remember what you currently had, okay? But once you actually turn that power switch off and cut power to the actual control module, it'll forget and reset. And then when you turn them back on, they'll just be flashing different colors. But if you just leave them on and just manually use the remote, they, it'll always remember what you have. So that's that. But again, I like those. Those are really inexpensive. And uh, I think they turned out great. So that's that. Actually, I could turn them off. Okay. So there's the inside. Um, I also have the speed pull um, flag holders here. So I have uh, two of them. I have one mounted here and one mounted here. So that way, you know, when I have the, the, the tarp rolled back, I can run some flags here. I just don't have them hooked up right now, but I do have those. I also got the DZ tailgate assist, which I think anybody that has a truck bed should get. This is awesome. It's only about 30 bucks, but again, this is what it does. When you have your truck, open it up. It's a, it's a hydraulic shock that keeps your bed from slamming down. Again, very, very easy to install. I even have an install video on it. Uh, on my uh, YouTube channel. But again, I really like those. So we'll shut that. Let's go look up to the back here. Back seat. A couple things here. As you first noticed, I do have all the WeatherTech uh, floor liners in here for now. Uh, front and back, this is the black version. As you can see here, I also have the Clausio um, synthetic leather seat covers. Now these are custom seat covers, so they're not just a cheap basic seat cover uh, these ones actually when you install them correctly they pretty much look like real leather seat covers so i have this video posted as well uh, it's got a lot of views a lot of people love it i love this seat cover again because it's very inexpensive you could go with like the cat scan or something that's a little bit more um, expensive and probably definitely better quality but you're talking fifteen hundred dollars to have something like that installed in your vehicle I think I got these. Uh, these are the Clausio ones. I got them on eBay for maybe $330 and did it myself, and they look fantastic. Here, I'll even show you the front. I mean, look at that. I mean, you, you honestly can't even tell that's not a factory leather seat. And again, it cost me $330 to do that. So if you want to see that video, go check that out. Uh, what else we got back here? So if we lift this up, ugh. okay. It's nice about the seat covers. They actually cover the bottom too. I also have some subwoofers back here. This is the MTX Thunderform box. I got on Crutchfield. It has two 10 inch MTX woofers. Really good sound. Um, fits really well. I just have this cover because I have my amp mounted down there. Okay, there's my amp there. I got the amp and the MTX Thunderforms off Crutchfield, but I have this custom foam pad just sitting here just so that nothing's running down in there like that. But this sounds really, really good. It's not huge bass vibration outside the vehicle. So if you're looking something that all your neighbors can hear and feel, um, probably isn't gonna give you that with these tens, but I am thinking about possibly selling these or putting these in my wife's truck and getting 12s back here. So I think if I got two 12 inch woofers, that would give me better bass response than the tens. But just for you know, listening and for your own pleasure, these kick off a ton of bass and I am still pretty happy with them. So I can't complain with that, but I also have that install video on my YouTube channel as well. Another thing I'll point out that I did with this truck is the rear seat modification. So as most of you know, the back seat is stationary. It doesn't move, but there is a custom modification you can do that'll allow you to do this. You lift it up so far, you grab it at a certain angle. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. There we go. And then it folds down. So what's nice about this modification here, which I also have, which I do have the video posted on my, on my channel, how to do it. It allows you full access to back here, which I'll probably use this area for some kind of custom gun rack, 
But if you want to use it for like your amps or, or stereo stuff or whatever, you could definitely use it for there. But it's pretty cool. And all you got to do is push it back like that, lift it up, push it back. It's locked in and ain't moving. So if you want to do that, check out the video for that. I have it posted. So that's pretty much the back seat for now there. Let's jump up to the front. Uh, again, we got the WeatherTech floor covers here. Pretty dirty. I did already go over the custom four by four shifter that I have there. Uh, there's other seat covers that I have here. I have the auxiliary switches here, which if you want to learn more about the custom auxiliary switches, just go check out my YouTube channel. I do have a video posted there uh, that's really popular. And let's see here, what else we got here? So this switch here works my compressor for my air horn so I can turn it on and off as I need it. Uh, up here, this chain pull, that's where my chain pull switch is. I have that custom installed myself to activate the horn for the train horns. So instead of having like a push button or wiring it into my regular horn here, I have it completely separate on a pull chain where I can just pull it and it works. So that's that. Let's see, I have the bullet point uh, phone mount here, which is an awesome stationary phone mount. I do have a video posted on that. That's probably one of the best vehicle phone mounts you can find if they make it for your vehicle. But I like it. So if you're going off road or whatnot, it's very, very stationary. It's not moving. It actually bolts into your dash and I have a full video on that. So that's there as well. Um, as you can see that switch right there, that's my tune switch. We'll go over that here in a minute. What else on the inside? Uh, okay, next. Uh, what I did here is I replaced the factory head unit. I got this Kenwood DMX 907S. This is the Exelon series uh, touchscreen Kenwood. This actually has the Bluetooth version of the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So great stereo touchscreen, great sound, great customization. I love the Bluetooth connectivity to Apple CarPlay. It's really convenient so that you don't always have to plug in your phone. Because keep in mind, a lot of these head units that you buy that says they have Apple CarPlay, it's wired Apple CarPlay. So that means you still have to plug your phone in somewhere to access Apple CarPlay. This particular Kenwood does not need that. It's all Bluetooth. And if you go back into my channel, you'll see the install video and review of that as well. And another thing I've done in my truck is because I have a 2016 Tradesman, my truck did not come with a cabin air filter. I don't know why, because I think the later model year in the 2016 heading into 2017 did start coming with a cabin air filter, but mine did not. So I went ahead and did a custom cabin air filter modification to mine, and I'll show you what I mean. So basically to access your cabin air filter, you open up your glove box, this little wire right here, you can just pull that forward just enough to pop it out of the hole like that and then go ahead and push in and your whole glove box pops open right up there that's the door for your cabin air filter so if you ever want to change your cabin air filter and you have one that's where you access it but mine did not come with that so if you go back into my youtube channel i show you how you can actually cut through that box and buy a door that fits that and you can slide your own cabin air filter in there and that way you can actually start filtering the air that's coming in from the engine bay down through into your cabin so a great modification very cheap and easy well we could talk about lighting all right so while we're sitting here let's just talk about lighting so in terms of lighting i have all kinds of lights going on with this truck so since we're staring at the inside i actually have eight rock lights mounted up in this vehicle. I have a four at the top and four at the floor. Let me see if he, there you go there. So as you can see here, I got the four rock lights at the top and then I actually have them down at the floors. So at night, this whole cab is blazing lit up. So I have that all wired in. I have it wired into my auxiliary switch right here. So that that's for the interior lights there. I have 20 bright white rock lights underneath the truck. So if you've seen that video, I have an install video on that, but I do have 20 bright white rock lights underneath the truck. As you can see here, I have one there, one there, one there. So I have three in each wheel well. Then I have two at the front, two at each side, and two in the back. So that gives me 20. So I have the 20 rock lights there. 
I do have wheel lights. So if you come down here, as you can see here, I have the wheel lights here as well. So the wheel lights can actually go any color I want them to be, and uh, which is pretty cool there. So again, if you're interested in the video on that, again, I have all this stuff posted on my YouTube channel. Today's video is just a walk around of everything that I've done. I have, this is an upgraded bumper. It's a factory bumper, but an upgraded bumper because the tradesman model that I had did not come with the fog lights. So I went with a factory bumper, had it custom painted to match, and then I actually installed the fog lights. And I have those wired up to those auxiliary switches as well. So those are nice and bright. I also have a large LED light bar across the bumper. I took my tow hooks out in the front uh, because they're pretty much useless when you do a uh, body lift. And I hooked in the light bar there. So I have that light bar as well. So again, I have a lot of lighting going on with this truck. Again, eight rock lights inside, 20 white rock lights outside wheel lights at each wheel, bright LED fog lights, bright LED light bar up front. And in the front here, I do also, I forgot to mention, I have a couple of those rock lights behind the grill. The ones at the front are kind of like right up here, right here and there facing down, and I have one up in there, so it kind of makes all that glow. So that's that. Let's pop the hood. I'll show you some things here. Under the hood is where I probably got to do most of the work. But as you can see here, I do have a custom grill. This is a custom made aluminum grill. It's in a multi-piece design. I got this from a guy named Cole Carter off Instagram. I believe he's from Canada. He's awesome. He makes all of my custom grills. I have, I used to have custom name plates made, but I had custom grills made for my truck and my wife's truck over here. So that's a custom grill. And this is a full replacement insert. So as you can see here, it replaces the full outer rim. Again, I had and I custom painted that myself, so we have that. Inside, I still have to add wire loom and clean up under here, but this truck is fully deleted and tuned, so it's a full delete kit, so the, the DPF, the EGR, everything's gone. And then for the exhaust, because I have it fully deleted and tuned, I actually have a five inch Flow Pro straight pipe that comes right from the turbo straight back right to here with that with the extra large tailpipe tip uh, i did the ccv vent tube delete right here you can see that hose so i have that and uh that pretty much i mean you could do a catch can but i really don't think you need a catch can with this I think if you're ever gonna do a full CCV filter delete where you actually rip this whole filter out of there and gut it, then you might wanna catch cam because you're gonna have a lot more oil to deal with. But being that I left the filter inside of here, which I don't really see the need to replace it, um, but I left the filter in here, so I just did the CCV vent tube delete kit right there. And I do have a video posted online for that. I do have the AFE power intake, air intake here, so I have that here. And let's see here, here's all my crazy wiring. I gotta do some more wire loom and clean that up. But this goes to all my wiring throughout the truck. So that I just gotta add some wire loom in here. And I actually, in the future here, what I wanna do is start taking off some of this stuff and painting it. So I'm probably gonna, gonna paint it silver or maybe a color, like a blue or, or something, I don't know. But that's the one thing about my truck that I gotta fix. I have to, I have to dress up the, the the engine bay area for like when I'm going to shows, it's very boring. So I wanna do some different things, maybe get some color hoses, uh, maybe some color clamps, some billet clamps, I'm not sure yet. Do a lot of wire loom, clean all this up. And I do wanna paint this hood. I'm gonna probably take this hood off and paint underneath. I'm gonna paint it all black and then maybe do some type of, you know, black and silver flag or something like that. I don't know, but I gotta do some kind of mural on that, so that'll be coming in the near future. But I definitely, in the near future, have some uh, things that I wanna do in the engine bay area to really clean this up. But so far, that's really about it as far as in here. Besides, again, the full delete and the tune on the CCV vent tube delete, the AFE power intake over here, and uh, just all my custom wiring for all my lights and so forth. So that's that under the hood. So that's really about it there. So we'll go ahead and shut that 
All right, so there's that. Okay, and another thing I want to point out is these jam handles. Now, if you've never seen a jam handle before, they're pretty basic and unique, but they do come in handy. So basically what they are is kind of more like a rubberized plastic polymer type product. Um, so what it does, it has a 3M strip on the back. You can get them in a two finger, three finger, or four finger setup like I have here. You can get them in all kinds of different custom colors and things like that. And they just stick on the inside jam of your door. Uh, thus why they're called the jam handle. Now the benefit of these is when, because I have a lifted truck, a lot of times when I go to shut my door, I just used to grab here and whip it shut or just grab on the outside. But I do find myself using these a lot because I put them on all four of my doors. But the benefit of these is let's say that maybe you just washed your vehicle and it's washed and waxed and you have dirty hands. You don't want to put your dirty hands on a clean car, but you also don't want to put your dirty hands inside. So you can just get your fingers in here, slam it shut. Another purpose of having the jam handle is also because let's say that maybe it's winter time and you're, and you're going to work. You have clean hands, clean clothes, and you're ready to go into work. You get out of your vehicle and you want to shut it. You not, you're probably not going to grab it from the outside because the outside's covered in salt and snow and mud and all the road debris gunk that's been thrown up on the side of your truck. And you can always grab here, but again, you can also just grab here and shut it. So again, the jam handles are very inexpensive. I mean, honestly, they're very, very cheap and you could get these online. Just go ahead and look them up online. They're called jam handle. They really are. Um, they're very basic, but they do come in handy. So there it is. That's my truck so far. That's a general walk around with what I've done with this truck so far. Now, how much have I invested in this thing so far? I have no idea. I, I honestly lost count. Actually, I might still have it. Let me look. So here it is. There you go. Here's my window sticker here. So I still keep that. All right, so there we go there. So as you can see, I paid, it's about 53,430 for this. Uh, I have the 373 rear axle gears. They're, they're good for stock, but not when you have an 11 inch lift on 40 inch tires. So what I wanna do in the future is probably change out those gears and maybe do I don't know, 456, something like that. I'm not sure yet. So, you know, that's kind of like down the road. But that is a quick walkthrough on what I've done to my truck so far. So as you've seen the window sticker, again, the truck started at about 53,000 and some change. If I was gonna just make up a number, cause I don't know, I, I would say I definitely have over 20,000 in this truck so far. So I'd say, Truck starts off at like the 53 range. I have a little over 20,000 invested into it so far. So we're over, we're over 70,000 for that truck so far. And that's, and that's not a bragging thing. I just want to explain to some of you, if you're you know one of these guys that are looking at a lot of these trucks out here posted and wondering, man, how much does that cost? It's a lot, but it's not, it's not that bad. It takes time. I mean, this is a 2016. I've been working on this truck for years. So it's one of those things where, you know, unless you have the money, most people aren't just doing it all at one time. This, this kind of custom thing happens over the course of years because it's a passion. It's something that, you know, guys like me and, and you and so forth, they just love to do. So it's not like we just rush in and do it all overnight. This takes time. You know, every year you do a little bit more and more, but I'm really happy with it. I love the truck. I've considered selling it and starting a new build, but it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to part with something that you've had and you love and you put so much time and effort into and it's hard to part with it, but it is something I am considering. So, you know, we'll see in the near future, next year or so, who knows? But for now, that's my truck there. And I do have some more things I wanna to do to it. Again, I wouldn't mind changing out the gears in the back. I'm not sure when that'll happen, but that's something I would like to do. I do wanna pop up the hood and clean up the engine bay, do some custom painting under there and really dress that up so when I do go to truck shows and the hood's popped open, it looks a little nicer. But that's my truck. Now over here, this is my wife's truck. I started working on this build. Again, we'll go over this another day if you really wanna learn a little bit more about what I've done to so far to this truck and what my plans are in the future for this truck. Let me know in the comments section and maybe I'll do a walk around on that so far. And then over here, that's my 
Corvette over here. That's a 2008 Corvette C6. So if you want to see a walk around video on what I've done with that, which I've done a lot so far, I'd be glad to do that. And then I have my 2010 Harley Davidson wide glide build that I have over there. So if you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comment section and I'd be glad to do that. So that's it for today's video. Again, the goal was just to do a walk around video of what I've done on this truck so far to help some of you guys out that might be wondering because I know a lot of you are really interested and have a passion for custom building trucks, cars, motorcycles, whatnot, just like I do. And you're always looking at what other people are doing to give you some ideas. And I do the same thing. I look at a lot of your guys' videos and posts to get ideas on what I might like to do. So again, this is just a really cool community that we're all part of. That's why I started the brand Diesel Legions. Again, you don't have to have a diesel truck to be a part of this community. Diesel Legions is more than just diesel trucks. And I'm gonna be posting a video on what Diesel Legions really is, but a quick snapshot, it's not just diesel trucks. Diesel stands for power, reliability, perseverance, hardworking, which to us is what American people are. That's what diesel is, strong, powerful, reliable. That's what the diesel is. And Legions is really just for the American flag and to each other in this community because this community is all about respect. We respect each other, we respect the build, we respect our soldiers and our first responders. That's what this brand is all about. So if you wanna check the brand out, I'll post the link in the description to the website where you can get yourself some hats, shirts, hoodies, and so forth. And I'm always adding more and more products to the mix. I even have truck flags now too. So check that out if interested. But I hope this video helps some of you out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy these types of walk around videos, leave a message in the comment section and let me know and I could do a walk around video on some of my other vehicles. And if you have any questions, about my build so far, leave it in the comment section and I'll get back to you at a later time. So that's it for this video. I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. I truly appreciate you all. Without you, my channel would be nothing. Thank you for your support. And as always, see you in the next video.